hello and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today we're going to be painting a watercolor four leaf clover because St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Typically clovers only have three leaves, but I'm feeling a little lucky, so let's do them with four. While I tape down my paper and you are doing the same, let's go over the general supplies you're gonna need for this tutorial. You're going to need watercolor, of course. I'm gonna be using this pan set that I made. Two cups of water, one clean for adding water and one for washing your brushes, a paper towel or rag, pipette, size 12 brush is what I'm gonna be using. This should work for anything from like an eight to a 12. Some watercolor paper, at least 140 pounds. That's what I'm using, Canson 140 pound watercolor paper and some masking tape. The first thing that we need to do is establish the shape of the clovers that we're going to be drawing. When you look at a clover plant, each of the leaves actually looks kind of like a heart. So we're already starting from a pretty well-known spot. So you're going to want to draw hearts. You'll want them a little elongated at the thinnest point, moving to the center. And if you're doing three, you're gonna do three hearts, but if you wanna do four like me, you're going to draw four hearts in the north, east, south, and west position. To make this look a little less stiff, you're going to want to vary the spacing between those leaves on at least one of them. So one of my leaves I'm actually placing where it has a slight overlap with the leaf next to it and then a larger space between that one and the next one. Finish drawing your clover as you want it and then make sure to erase a little bit so that that pencil color is really light. To erase, I like to use a kneaded eraser and use more of a pressing and lifting motion than a scrubbing one so that I'm not disturbing the paper underneath as much. If you're using pans like me, you're going to want to take some clean water in a pipette and wet the colors you're going to be using. We're going to be mixing up two colors of green to start with, and I am going to primarily be using the sap green, the viridian hue, and the yellow ochre. You can use whatever colors you have in your kit or you can follow along with me, but for the first green, we want this to be a darker, vibrant green, and the second one is going to be a lighter and more muted green. So for the first one, I'm using sap green and the viridian hue, and the second one is primarily going to be the sap green and the yellow ochre. You'll notice me going into actually four different colors, and that's because I thought I was using four, but I realized after this that it was a duplicate pan of the sap green, so I'm really just using the three colors. Once you have two colors that vary a bit in opacity as well as vibrancy, you can get started. You're going to start with a single leaf. Each of these heart-shaped leaves is going to be comprised of two basic petal shapes. So you're gonna to wanna to paint those separately and individually with the darker green and more vibrant green that you created. And if you look at a clover, you'll notice that that vein that runs down the center of the leaf is actually a lighter color, so you want to make sure you preserve some white space between those two petals that you're painting. In this tutorial, we're gonna be balancing some subtle layering effects, and while things are still wet, since we want the center part to kind of sink down where everything connects together, there, where the colors are actually more concentrated, we're going to be occasionally tapping in just a tiny bit of straight viridian hue at the center parts, and then incorporating that up a little bit into the leaf itself. You're gonna repeat this first step for each of those leaves or little hearts that are separated into two petals. If you chose like I did to have one of the leaf shapes overlap the other, 
you're going to want to make sure that on the leaf that is underneath it, which is the one I'm painting now, that in addition to tapping that viridian hue towards the center, you also tap it along the edge that is underneath that other leaf to kind of give it the effect of some shadow. You can see that a little more clearly here now where I have that viridian hue at the center as well as along that edge that's going to be obscured by the other petal. The best way to get this effect of the shadow is while things are still wet, not movably wet, but the paper is still damp by tapping that hue into there and it will spread and dilute and just feather out very nicely. If yours has dried too much and it doesn't happen, you can always dip your brush into some clean water and take most of the pigment off and then just encourage that to spread a little bit by tapping next to it. Repeat this same process for the other leaves and I will speed this up so that we don't have to wait too long before we start adding in a few more details and some more depth. I was feeling like mine was a little bit flat and I wanted to encourage kind of that feeling of the center of the clover being a little bit further down and also the leaves kind of curving slightly in. Even though these are pretty flat, we still want to have a bit of depth. So I'm taking some of that straight viridian hue and lightly touching in the center out and along those vein lines. I am still trying to preserve that white area so when I am tapping that viridian hue towards the center I'm doing my best to not touch the white very much. Even though we want some of that depth we still want to preserve some of that light. Since my leaves are pretty much dry, I'm now going to start taking some of that more muted color and putting that around the edges to kind of soften the edges of these leaves. And I'm doing that to all of the leaves on the clover first before going back into my darker color and tapping kind of in the top ball of each of those petals to try to saturate a little more color there. Again, while things are still a little damp, you're going to want to re-emphasize some of the center parts with that viridian hue. Let this dry probably about 90% of the way before again re-emphasizing some of those layers. The more layers that you kind of play with, the more depth you're going to ultimately end up with. We're not trying to be perfect here. I find that Leaving a little to the imagination with watercolor is kind of the best way to do this, but you'll see that there is preserved white area and there are some darker tones that just give a little more depth to this. Let's wait and see how this dries up. While I'm waiting for my first clover to dry and for me to kind of evaluate it once everything has settled, I wanted to test another way for painting these that may or may not be easier. I didn't pre-draw this out, so I am just going by the sh general shapes we've outlined. And instead of doing both of those petals that make up the heart the same color, I did one the darker color and one the lighter color. And then I went into the center part and I cleaned my brush off and I tried to remove as much of the pigment from the center as I could. I repeated that 
same step for all of the leaves that were going to be on there. And then, like the other one, I took that darker viridian hue and tapped it kind of along the center areas, as well as the very middle point, trying to give it a little texture and a little depth. I repeated that second clover pattern with slight variations on color for a few more clovers on this sheet. And in general, I found this method to be easier and faster. I think my first one is a little better quality with the depth, but I don't know how much more it is for how much extra time I spent on it. So perhaps try this second technique and you might have a faster route to success. Ultimately, I added a little bit of text just because I wanted to kind of balance this out with some light and dark, and I wanted to say feel unlucky. I hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you have more questions, let me know in the comments. And if you try this out, let me know. You can also let me know what plans you have for this St. Patrick's Day. If you want to see more testing videos where I test out different variables for fluid painting, want to see any watercolor tutorials or some other art supply testing, subscribe to my channel. Or if you just want to see some of the art that I create, it's really varied. You can follow me either at Lacey Walker Art or at Rebel Unicorn Crafts on Instagram or Rebel Unicorn Crafts on TikTok where I make some, some funny videos as well as some tool talk videos and I hope that you have a magically creative day.